So welcome everybody um, in this lectures. I mean, it almost appears like a horse city of the uh, difficult double. It's obviously not a horse city. It was a lecture which was supposed to happen yesterday, but Jan is an extremely busy man, and um, luckily enough, Bas was also an extremely busy man. So in some strange way, one problem resolved the other. So the lecture of yesterday became the one of Bas Prinsen, and tonight we have Jan. So Jan. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Uh, it's a pleasure for us also, especially because Jan is um, the guest professor of next year um, in the uh, second year bachelor. So for the ones who are interested, um, so here you have the chance, if you would not already know him, uh, to get to know him a bit better. And for all us who are, of course, uh, big fans and big followers of his work, I would like to say this one little thing. If you have the term difficult double, I think in many ways it would be perfectly applicable to both Jan and myself. I think we are very, very close in many ways, but we can probably at first glance not be further away one from the other, or at least in the production of our architectures. So um, for that reason also I thought it was great uh, to have Jan here and to specifically have him talk about Eric Owen Moss which does not perhaps sound like the most evident choice, but we feel, and apparently, luckily enough, also Jan feels uh, there's something to say about. Um, so Jan, <coughs> apart from um, the fact that I very much look forward, thanks again for coming. Um, yeah, we're curious. Me also. <laughs> okay. Um, our lectures always starts with the title over, which is difficult to translate. Maybe it's about, maybe it's on. And today, so-called, the lecture has to be on Eric Owen Moss. Do you hear me? Does everybody hear? Do you hear me? Yes, clear. Um, which is not that easy. Maybe it's not a lecture about uh, Eric Owen Moss. Maybe it's or not. And to be honest, it was uh, a couple of months ago when I arrived at Kasten's place and uh, he was just having a phone call, I guess, or I think, with Andrea, and all of a sudden the question came. Can you make a double about you and Moss? I don't know if he prepared his question or just coincidentally at that point they just invented the question. And I had to say yes, of course. Why shouldn't I say yes? On the other hand, I felt a little bit... I would not say trapped, but I thought like, yes, what still I do know about Eric Owen Moss, and I had to say, well, I didn't answer that question until last Sunday, when I picked up that book of Eric Owen Moss I bought, I believe in 2009, 2010, that fat telephone book, um, and I didn't remember anymore, or not specifically anymore, what I liked that much at that time, but I still loved it, also the idea that this book came and the book was called, when I found it back on Sunday, Construction Manual. So I did not make a research on Eric Owen Moss, and I even cannot say when he died, when he drunk, or when he was doing this or that. Uh, I just picked up that book as the reference, and uh, it's a fantastic book, because uh, I discovered also that the book almost has no uh, text or no explication. It has a kind of way of setting things together, and seemingly orders the projects into different, has different names, different places, but then on another moment in the book, photographs seems to shift from one to the other project. Anyway, I did not went profoundly in analyzing how the book works, but uh, still on Sunday, it was a sunny day, as you can see on this snapshot with my mobile. Uh, it's a beautiful book to look at, and I thought like maybe I just have to stay with the, fur, with the four words, design, engineering, fabrication, construction, and see what happens. Anyway, not everyone in my family agreed on Sunday that I started uh, looking at this uh, book, but it had something nice, that a small child stood on that big book. But maybe I just run with you through that book, some pages, as you can see, you have on the sides of the, of the pages, you have this kind of incisions uh, which guides you really like a telephone book through all the projects, although it's not very consequent, I believe, I had to say. But the book combines plans, nice plans, which is green background each time, plans, details, details which you cannot uh, immediately 
place uh, always and uh, when you think you can find on the text below something about situating the detail it's merely a poetic statement or a statement of most somewhere by repeated by someone so it does not always helps you in understanding what uh, happens in the book but when you keep on taking pages 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 you keep on again and i was happy to that and i remember that enjoy that i had uh, uh, five years ago when i when i bought it that you just look it turn it you do not want to see too much explic explanations you just look at it and i took some pages which were intriguing to me like this one i will come back on soon or like this one a kind of plan, one can say. It's a kind of aerial on a project which does not explain itself. It, and to be honest, the text also next to it is a quite a dry text explaining the program. It's almost not explaining the project itself. Photographs like this. Anyone? Or this one. You look at this picture and you say like, after a while, you discover things. It seems that there is a roof, an existing roof. It seems that another roof maybe is under construction. Under the construction of the other roof. Why? We cannot understand immediately. You see on this photograph right below a shadow on brickwork. It's a brickwork wall which is put a little bit round. Is it a mistake? Or is it something he thought of uh, immediately from the beginning? We do not know. Some pictures are maybe not of that bad, not, not of that good quality neither. This picture is about a kind of reflection in glass, but when you look good to the picture, maybe in combination with the sun from the Sunday on it, you do not exactly anymore if the right one or the left one might be the mirrored one. All of a sudden, it combines sketches with a wall, with a kind of arcade. So I just took some pictures. Till the moment the book changes, and I have to say that those pictures were those which kept under my attention when I kept on in the first part of the book going backwards and forwards, then discovering, for example, this detail, or this compilation, looking through sections on which you discover columns you've seen on another photograph somewhere else in the book, Plans and photographs are not always immediately in the same order. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So I just show you a little bit to get into that book. It has many hundred pages. And I come back on the pictures I took here later on when I combine it with production of our own practice, architect in the Vale of Tailleux. So they are a little bit blurry because I took them in, an, in a simple way. So as I said, at a certain point, I kept on gathering the pictures, but also I stopped in the book. As I said in the beginning, I was fascinated by this word, design, engineer, fabrication, construction. He calls it a construction manual. It is like it's a guide of how you have to do the things from now on. It's not explaining the projects profoundly, but it tries to explain them in a way like it's only about construction. But then, as I said from a certain page on, the book starts to change. It starts to change in later on work, and to be honest, I haven't took photographs of the latest production, but it's, I, I remember that I never came to that part of the book. Well, I looked at it once, but I left it for what it was. And then, all of a sudden, those kind of drawings, those kind of projects come along. And maybe I arrived there at that point in the book, of which I say I have to add a, sec uh, a fifth comment, which says, I do not understand where it's about. It's this point of production, which is significantly different from the first works of um, Eric Owen Moss. And at the end, I lose, or he loses, control on it, and I lose control in understanding it. 
So, okay, what uh, could I do on a Sunday afternoon? My, well, my son was not really happy with my, with my all of a sudden uh, research on it. Uh, I said, like, as I said, maybe it's good that I take those four uh, concepts he thinks the book is about and say, like, okay, let's talk about design or maybe not. Uh, let's talk about the engineering or maybe it's not about engineering and such. And then maybe at the end, do and maybe at the end I add the fifth point. First point we can talk about now is design or not, and I could add a kind of point which keeps us busy, or which keeps us in our mind, in our practices, do and don't. Do something and don't do it. Because, for example, I showed this picture, it was on the early pages of the book, and it is, of course, a picture of a construction site, but maybe it's not a picture of a construction site. Maybe it's a picture of a certain result. But strangely, and that's really strange, the, the name of the project shifts. But strangely, some pages further on in the book, you find the same picture. You see a picture of the same structure, but finished. And it has another name in the project, in the book. So when I looked at, back to this on Sunday, and I, I thought like, yeah, this is something, this is something which is really also, when we look to our work, always on our mind, always in the ambiguity, in, in the debate, I can say, what we will do. So you see, it's exactly the same. So the first project I'd like to put next to it, and maybe might be also a project that I would like to have a debate on with Eric Owen Moss, is a simple project, which was maybe, it's not the most important project, but it's a project that I like to put next to it. It is a design we have been doing a scenograph for an interior Biennale art fair, I could say, uh, in interior, um, design fair, I could say, in Kortrijk every two years. And uh, the idea is that interior is a room, and you see the title of the idea, Mirror Morer on the wall, you see yet in the word, the mirroring. And, um, this is the first photograph of the installation we made at that time. Um, and I have to refer to Kerstin and David as they are responsible for the atmosphere of this long corridor which uh, travels through the halls at uh, Kortrijk uh, Hallen uh, in Kortrijk, of course, in Belgium. And uh, there is an atmosphere which is about these columns, about the ceiling, about the white. I show you the plan, so that's the complete complex of this kind of fair, buildings, halls. And you see in the middle, crossing from left to the right, a kind of huge corridor, I believe it's 260 meters long. I just take a kind of cut out of the plan. And every two years you have, of course, the design, the design fair, Vitras and all, they come along and they take their specific islands in the halls. And then you have so-called of the curatorial team, a kind of selection which they call the cultural selection, and that cultural selection is very often shown in this long corridor. But to be honest, when you see that cultural selection, although you claim it to be cultural selection, it's always a mess. So to, to, to deal with that mess, we invented rooms. And those rooms, they had merely on the outside mirrors. And by those mirrors, we could restore somehow the atmosphere of the empty corridor. Okay, that's the story about the project, but maybe I just like to show, I want to talk about this. When I remember or when I look to the photographs of Eric Owen Moss, and I see on one hand this photograph from the construction site, of which I can imagine that it would be a finished situation, but some pages further on in the book is affirmed that it was not a finished situation at all. Maybe in this photograph lays the combination of the two photographs of Eric Owen Moss. For us, in our practice, I think it's always an ambiguity, a kind of double one can say, a kind of debate, a kind of interest in, on one hand, working with how things are made and how we can make them explicit, and on the other hand, working, or on the other hand, combining them often with um, highly finished um, detailing. The mirror is an often used uh, element that is used because it makes things ambiguous by their perception themselves. 
But on the other hand, it's also used as a kind of highly finished materials in combination with the quality of the so-called rough bu uh, building construction. But okay, on that art fair, and that's what I like to show, something strangely happens, and maybe that's what brings it back also to Eric Owen Moss photographs on that point. We made a series, 25 series, of strange coincidences. When we made that structure, it was well prepared, it was made uh, in the workhouses and we arrived to that construction on site and we just could bring it all together in a couple of days. But what we discovered when we went home one evening, we saw that in those halls where all those exposants uh, arrived, they prepared their own island. And this preparation of the old island always started with a kind of making walls, a kind of room also, and those rooms, they used those kind of multiplex plywood, reused plywood, which had different colors, possibly from different fairs or whatever. But if you look at it, they were wonderful. Imagine that this would be Vitra finishing it. That's the first day of the Vitra site. So we took a lot of photographs of that, but we asked also to Philippe Dujardin to make photographs of our production, and we put them one next to the other. And to be honest, without many, we didn't make that many appointments or regular or, or perspectives on that. It just happened like it is. And I like to show them to you because maybe once again, to me and my mindset, I have to say, my perception, it brings us together, to uh, brings us back to what we saw on those photographs of Eric Owenmoff. We made 25 series. I won't show them at all. But if you see like this, it's a kind of such an island, one can say, how the light falls on it. It is beauty. If it would have been an art fair, you would have liked to buy it. But that's their first day of the exposant, and that's our production. We used this uh, series uh, as uh, on the opening of the uh, Biennale. We were invited to give a small lecture. We give this lecture by this 25 series, combining those kind of ideas. And as we heard already that many exposants were not so happy with our intervention, as they are never allowed to show construction and they have to be very glossy finishing everything. Uh, on that uh, small lecture afterwards, we have to say that the organization was not so very happy with this lecture, because the lecture seems to have been commenting too much the idea uh, of where they were standing for. But see, those small things, they are really nice to look at. So, I just bring this together with these pictures of Eric Cohen Moss. Still not knowing if I do it in the right way, if someone knows a lot about Moss and the theory and the history and the position, but still bringing to me in the same kind of mindset the things together. It is something ongoing for us. I can prove it or I can show it by another project which occurred on another occasion. We were in the Biennale, Venice Biennale, two years ago in the Belgian Pavilion and there needed to be a double exhibition in Antwerp, in the single in Antwerp. And we thought at that point that it should have been good that the Belgian Pavilion was represented in the exposition space at the single. Of course, the exposition space was too small uh, to get it in, so we had to make a kind of rescaling of it, and happily it found, we found out that 49% was the right scale to get the building in it, which is exactly the amount of Flemish ground in Belgium. It's small details that are sometimes so nice to see. So what you see here again, we made this Belgian pavilion as a kind of staff work, they say, a kind of decorum. We built it with plasterboard, with a firm who sponsored this completely. But at the end, where it stood for was for us the fascination that, in fact, we wanted to represent the Belgian pavilion, not by making a real-time model of it, but especially by representing its interior. And on the back side of the interior, you have the outside, of course, the exterior, but in fact, the exterior is not there. It's only the construction of the interior that keeps up. And maybe I would, if I could have a talk with Eric Cohen-Moss, I would have asked 
uh, whether he was not able to be convinced him or to convince himself that moment when he made that picture of the building site to change his initial idea which is of course ending in that other picture with the white finishing to change that idea and to come back to that construction way because I believe that that first arcade in wood was strong enough to be already enough to make that separation in space to make that construction as it should be it's an idea I would like to talk with him about as you see the interior is highly finished while the exterior is sometimes coming clear coming in the front so I would say maybe it's a pity that the second photograph had been made or if I had to say maybe at that time unconsciously it might have inspired us when I went backwards and forwards in the book to keep it up like this enjoy this picture I enjoyed it very much so for us the opinion is very often when we make work that we try to decide what we do and what we don't do what we finish and what we don't finish but at the end everything has for us an opportunity of being the finished we don't believe we present unfinished work we do believe that when you see this photograph of Eric Owen Moss it is worth a debate to say like maybe it could be stated finished from a certain point of you engineering so Moss claims the idea that this book this book is about engineering also which is strange because one can say that when you look to the pictures they never reveal the kind of uh, simple engineering at all it's seemingly that engineering for him is like following his ideas merely then ideas are energized by engineering anyway so we put the idea of or not and I think that might fit with his work and we make an exercise here in combining things about the column a column is an element of a building of course and that column is very important in engineering like the beam like many other load-bearing parts but on the other hand the column and that's we all know and I just don't claim new ideas I just explain ideas uh, on the other hand column has many things much more than just being a column maybe it's at only at the end a part of engineering now what you see here is a gallery in which we presented uh, our first uh, pieces of furniture first objects and this is one of the spaces and uh, the first time we came out gallery we said oh what a nice space but then the second third time we arrived we had something like there is something strange in the space we cannot place exactly where the focus of the space is uh, how you could uh, circulate in the space uh, what's the real history it seems to be a concrete beam and column that supports something else a kind of uh, terrace roof on top and then you have the strange door which leads to to an older part of the house it's a complex of many houses and buildings in between so we thought like um, of course we're going to present our objects but on the other hand we also maybe just because we are architects and not designers we also want to manipulate the space in a way it could support the ideas in a better way so what happened is that we said to the gallery the gallerist that uh, our idea is that we should add four new concrete columns which obviously the gallerist said like are you crazy you're never gonna you, you're not allowed to do this and we said like yeah but we want to do so although we had a no we wanted to have a yes and this kind of no is always very intriguing because it leads for it brings you to uh, other to other ideas and maybe to better ideas because what we did again is like with the Flemish pavilion it's like for me for example with this arcade of uh, Eric Owen Moss you make a decor you make a decor and what we do here we just make those columns out of uh, simple plywood and in the column there is this kind of typical stamp you use in, in, in building in, in rough building situations and at the end we just painted them white and to us all of a sudden the place of this, this the room was much more at its equilibrium together with the idea we found it interesting that the concrete column is of course 
uh, is made able by its ironing, uh, but here the decor column is also um, made able by a kind of uh, metal piece that helps keeping the things uh, on, on place. And I found in this Eric Owen Moss book another page, another page in which uh, this idea, I believe, of a series of columns of which at a certain point, and in fact, Later on, I discovered that it's another viewpoint on that same arcade. It's a frontal viewpoint on it. That all of a sudden you see here a kind of shift of columns. And when I look to that uh, picture of Eric Owen Moss, I have to say, I take the advantage of the perception to say like, maybe those columns are not constructive at all. And I know they are not constructive from a certain viewpoint. But at the end, they organize space in a different way. And maybe at this point, when I make the argument that I would like to see the arcades unfinished, when you see this photograph of Eric Olmos, it leads me to the idea like maybe it's a very good idea it's finished because now you have this kind of layering of different columns that brings it all together in another way. See also, for example, the way how this column has been given ornament. Anyway, the Second point was engineering. And in this engineering and our point of view of columns, I can show you many projects. Like, for example, a recently delivered project which also um, wants to make or wants to take a position towards the idea of column and the graphical quality of column. It's in Antwerp, on the left bank of Antwerp, a kind of modernistic part of the city of Antwerp. And a couple of years ago, there was a... Uh, competition uh, to make a new urban plan for the whole site and what you see on this axonometry which is very light unfortunately is our contribution in front of the biggest slab and in front of the biggest slab was uh, demanded a project for housing and a service center a local service center from four levels and we changed the project the idea of the project in only presenting one level but two smaller flat towers with about uh, seven levels maximum. This is a kind of drawing. Maybe I want to say something about the drawings later on also, but that's the outcome of the project uh, today. So as I said, service flats and a local service center. But what was for us important at that point is that, of course, such a slab is, has been at its time, you can say, a kind of representation of its construction. What you see is what you get. What it is, it's all construction. It's cantilevering concrete, but it's all real construction. Nowadays, with uh, the challenges we have, to, we have to deal with, insulation, uh, cold bridges and such, it's impossible to, do, to build such things. But on the other hand, we have to say that towards the, uh, uh, towards the venue, we had this ambiguous feeling that we loved the graphic of the construction and that, of course, we had to add to bring in something new to, to, to change it significantly. But on the other hand, we wanted to inscribe our project into the whole series. And what we did is that we made a kind of graphic of columns, which one can give an interpretation at the, at the, at the, at the, the, the main floor, the local, as a kind of arcade. Well, when you look to the flats, they just make the drawing of rooms and flats. Sometimes you have a real arcade, sometimes you have the drawing of the frame upon the building. I show this project here today in the series with uh, Eric Owen Moss, because for me, when you look to Eric Owen Moss' work, um, he often comes back with a graphic of really seemingly structural elements, uh, colonnades, arcades, and such. But when you have a close look to it, he plays them uh, often in an architectural way only. And maybe this project I show, because I have to admit, it's a very graphical intention, a very graphical outcome. But we believe with that graphical outcome, we bring it all together in the framework of the graphical perception we had that today still from this kind of modernistic uh, 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 background, decor. 
that's another page I found in uh, Moss's uh, book on which on the, when you look to the photograph on the, the right side above, it's once again a photograph which is clearly a photograph from the construction period. But if you look in different way to it and you close your eyes or open them, you see those columns in front of the wall and sometimes you're not sure whether they are attached to the wall, uh, whether they are a little bit standing in front of the wall. And when you have a close look, the shadow of the columns help you in concluding that they are in front of the wall. But the photograph somehow suggests the different. And when you look to the left photograph, uh, you can see that later on those columns, they were in fact needed to have a kind of cantilevering, you can't say cantilevering anymore, supporting position to the level above. But it brings me again to that point which I see today, this last Sunday, I found so interesting when I, when I went in the book, is this debate or this doubleness of this finishing versus the unfinished and the advantages of both to get one can say in the debate at a certain time. I like to add maybe in that sense specifically a project we are making or building at this time of which the roof building phase is finished. It's a project for the old uh, townhouse of the the city of Ledeberg at that time, nowadays a part of the city of Ghent. And what you see here is a prepared photo of uh, Philippe Dujardin, in which we do research on a certain kind of finishing. But you see what you see, there is the old column of the building, vice versa, a new column we added in the building. And this is the building, the actual status, or not the actual status, because the roof is completely finished. The windows are in it, we are painting the facade at this moment, at this very moment. But anyway, keep in mind, this is the building. I will come back uh, a couple of times in this small lecture. And what you see on the roof is that you have these triangular incisions, which are, let's say, the opposite of attics. And what you see also from the first level, I can point you now, there is something difficult with the building. It's a building which was originally four houses. Later on, they glued on a kind of classical facade uh, as the city of uh, Ledeberg at that time bought the houses to change them to a kind of communal center. But also in that communal center is uh, included a large theater place. And it runs from left to the right side. Anyway, just... And this is the view to the uh, back side of the building, which is, and I hope it's a little bit too light maybe, to see. It's an axonometry that explains its uh, position into that city. You see the church. And this axonometry is a little bit strange because we changed the direction of it as we wanted to present the facade together with what we did at the background, this addition of strange volumes. I like to come back or maybe by this plan I can explain a little bit. What you see here is a kind of oblique setting of plan, roof plan, facades, uh, um, um, section as such. And if you have a closer look to this plan, you can see the four houses I was talking about. You can see the facade in front, which is this facade. And this is the main building. And what we did is, it was a competition. The city of Ghent wanted the restoration of this building. And they ordered a new building of the same volumetry in the backyard of uh, the terrain, of the side, of the venue. But we made a, s a precise calculation on the plan and we were able to bring all the program, almost all the program, into the main volume, as it had many in between levels. The city of Ghent and its competition demand did not calculate it. And at the end it needed some additions, like for example staircases, that could cross this one level that goes from one to the other's end. And what you see here is a kind of only ad addition which was original, which inspired us to do so. We come back on that later. Anyway, the main building had a really bad structure and we needed to add a new structure. And what we did, we pulled out all the old levels and we pulled in new tables of levels. And this led to this picture. You have the setting, uh, the setting of the facade. And now behind that facade, you see the new setting of the new levels and the new pictures. When I 
come back to that project nowadays and uh, maybe especially in the frame of Eric Owen Moss photographs I was presenting. Uh, I bring also this picture of a picture I found in a book on Venice, uh, on the world, on, on the war period in Venice, and the way how they protected their buildings at that time. It's uh, the Dogen Palace, which is protected by brickwork. Some other pictures I include. Strange ways of protecting them. The brick wall, this kind of wooden coverings of elements, and you see also in the arcade above that they added extra columns to support it. Maybe an Eric Owen Moss avant la letter. Another picture I like to put in this sense, to get, uh, in, in this kind of debate, is a picture of an old chimney, 17th century chimney in an old house in Ghent, in which they seem to have introduced in 19th century, this kind of 19th century, smaller, smaller um, chimney. Anyway, where we are today is that uh, the structure has been made, of course. We had a, kind of, a couple of rooms by monumental services of which we needed to have, which the demand was to have a certain respect. But at the end, we think we have a very specific respect to it. You see this kind of decoration of classical colonnades on the facade of those re rooms, one can say. And you see, on the other hand, this kind of colonnades which have all a different size. Because we wanted to have, and you can see it in the theater place above, we wanted to clear out how the, bu the building really works. So we demanded to the engineer to bring to each column its specific diameter, its specific size. And you see on one hand a kind of consequent colonnade, but on the other hand you see the small difference in that colonnade coming back. And whenever we had to make an arcade, because in the room below you had, for example, a passage from one side to the building to the other, we introduced in combination with the metal, the kind of concrete beams or con concrete, let's say, portafos we had there. Today we are here. We are preparing the finishing. How do we prepare the finishing? On the left side, you have the photograph of the existing, let's say, the actual status of today. On the right side, we had on that photograph only those pages, only those pieces we will paint soon, because we want to achieve a moment of we want to obtain uh, this issue that maybe the rough building phase might be already the final phase of the building. On the left side, actual status. On the right side. You see the eventual status in the future. We are debating this with the client, the city of Ghent, right now. But uh, it seems to become successful. Once again, this first photograph from the beginning and the column as it stays. Viewpoint from the other side. We kept the old door. You can't see it on the photograph. It will be placed uh, in it uh, soon. And then when you open the door, you will find another column, always depending from the site you're entering in a different modus. Anyway, I like to put this kind of pictures, especially this one, on the left side, because there was, for example, a demand of the engineering. We needed this kind of huge concrete cantilevering column to, to make a support from, for something above, in which at a certain point, he suggested that he could connect them to the beam and then we could make a concrete column of it and then everything was, for, for his viewpoint, okay. But we forced him to keep it as it was, as we demanded the engineer to bring everything at the real size, at the real need of things. And all of a sudden, I found this picture of Eric Owen Moss in that book last Sunday, strangely. All of a sudden, not all of a sudden, but then when I went back from one to the other project, I kept on finding those kind of photographs in this Eric Owen Moss book. And to be honest, I don't believe that we had that book on our desk when we were developing this project. Not at all. But to be honest, I love the coincidence I found back uh, last Sunday, although I think it's, from another viewpoint, completely different. If you see this, it's covering. It's, uh, I found another photograph in which you will see that the white kind of cantilevering thing 
is completely out of wood and Eric Cohen Moss seems to have loved to use a lot of plasterboard just to make this kind of spaces. And we have many projects that deals with that. It's like this simple projects and when it's about engineering and I say in Lederberg, this, uh, this uh, communal center we are making as I showed, um, um, this element of the column is not anymore straight the idea of the engineering. We play with its thoughts, we play with the precision of the sizes of everything and then we even stopping, stop him uh, making it a really engineering construction. But this is a simple other idea. It's just a kind of uh, office building or let's say refurnishment of a building towards an office building we delivered for a firm called Famous, kind of public publicity firm. And um, what you see here is that we are in an old building with an old corridor and different rooms. rooms. The only thing we changed is the walls in between the rooms we took away and we replaced them by a kind of glazed wall, glazed wall with not always transparent but translucent glass in it because they wanted to have a kind of unity on one hand and on the other hand still the opportunity to divide spaces. So sometimes they are fixed, sometimes you can, you can move them. But what it's about here is that one other look, I think, I would like to say to Moss's arcade debate, is that maybe what happens here for us is important. You have, on one hand, we needed to add structure, there was structure. On the other hand, we needed to add this glazed facades. But at the end, we brought everything, structure and detail together, just by the simple uh, element of color. What you see above is that we found old pieces, which resembled the kind of frescoes, one can say, the old situation, and all of a sudden we adopted the color and we spread out the color over everything, the detail, the construction, and by that the construction became part of the detail and the detail part of the construction, we believe. And every space, every room got its own atmosphere, its own detail, its own uh, topic, uh, element, its own quality. And this is where it led to. It led to, in fact, a simple intervention, but all of a sudden the simple intervention turned back to the reality or to the history, let's say, about the building itself. The pink wall, the pink wall inspired that one column to be pink, and the, the brown wall is because in that specific room we found back that other color. I think that when you look to Moss's work, structure, space, detail, it often gets blurry. Maybe it's another version of making one thing on one hand uh, straight, but on the other hand, uh, change them in perception uh, significantly. And at the end, you get this kind of strange stories that... Uh, original doors that lead it from one room to the other room in some positions uh, makes strange divisions, strange openings. When the sliding walls are closed, you can use the doors. And in another way, there the workspace really comes open as such. See the color once again as that simple gesture. And somewhere in the book of Eric Owen Moss, I found this picture. He seems to have uh, found many years ago already the joy of using uh, greenhouse uh, structures, making corners, making openings. It usually leads to other projects like this Rotlenberg house, I just quickly show, in which we may to enjoy to make a new glass, smaller house in a somehow larger scaled house than the one you see now, and in which Maybe also at the end, at a certain perception, what is structure? Like this uh, eternal stamp you see there, becomes together with the greenhouse uh, elements. In this case, both they are aluminium and they are steel, treated steel, but they come together and this perception delivers this. It's different than the, than the 
office I just showed in which we particularly added color, but here the color of the material, it all comes together and it shifts away. <coughs> Today we are making a lot of new type of drawings and it's happened, it, 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 um, it started on the occasion of the making of this 2G issue, uh, this 2G number. And this is, for example, a drawing in which we try to catch the idea of the house. This is a drawing, axonometric drawing, looking from below into the house, which explains the way how the structure is made, uh, cast, uh, production, cast material you use to make concrete plates and such. But we are now starting at the office to make a complete kind of series of drawings. And I like to put these drawings in this lecture. If I saw, if I showed you already earlier in the lecture, all those drawings of uh, Eric Owen Moss, those axonometric drawings that keeps on turning uh, um, um, facades to, to sections to plants. And I show you now from the next project, Le Balissi de la B, a kind of drawing that explains in another way the way the facade has been made, although I will explain it to you in the original way. just because the joy of drawing. As I did not explain Rotlenberg completely, neither famous or the other projects, and I don't think that's the goal from this, for this lecture, I try to explain the projects in relation to what I saw in this book. And you see here Le Balessé de la Baie once again, and its uh, status as built. And I think you see that point that when I would have a talk with, or would like to have a talk with Eric Owen Moss, once again, that debate that maybe um, the unfinished status might be revealing already uh, also the structure as he wants to reveal it with the finished structure. This facade started with a simple drawing. It's a part of a future building which is a production studio and we are now looking to the facade which represents, let's say, the auxiliary program the smaller programs like loges, technical spaces, which goes together with that uh, main program of the production studio, which is in fact a huge hall. But that huge hall has closed facades almost. We, we were able to make some openings. That's another story. But this facade was the only facade we could make completely open. And this first drawing is uh, representing the five levels and you're representing the way of openings and closed parts. It's indicating already the first time the staircase. And then you see a more worked out drawing, a kind of axonometric handmade drawing, explaining it again. But if you look to that drawing, you will see that there is no structure yet. So here again, like in Lederberg, although Lederberg came later than this project, we asked the engineer, to go back to his drawing tables, as for first he presented a general structure of columns and beams all of the same size. We asked him to go back and to deliver us many drawings with different types of different types of construction. On one hand, you see in the left drawing, and you saw it in axonometry, uh, green. Uh, and it's not the, the color of the metal, but it's the color of the paint we gave to it. The, in, in we, we asked them to, say, to deliver drawings in metal structure, drawings in concrete structure, drawings in uh, masonry. So we could make a combination of all structural dimensions, of all structural schemes. So we laid upon the, all the schemes upon each other. And in this project specifically, we asked to give them all the specific dimensions at each point. Let's lead it to this, uh, to this um, um, drawing at the end. And we made the decision, for example, that all the open parts of the facade should be in metal, while the closed parts of the program would be a combination, could be a combination of concrete and masonry. And you see on this drawing yet, as you see also in the outcome of the facade, that they all have a different size. When you go inside the building, it even becomes more clear.
maybe this is the photograph which comes closest to the work of uh, Eric Owen Moss, if you want. It doesn't have to for us. And this explains again our fascination for structure, construction, which is at a certain point, as I claimed the idea, not construction anymore, but maybe just a drawing, maybe just a joy of detail. The close parts. I skip the story of the facade here. The third element, fabrication or not. To be honest, it's that claim of idea that I really do not completely understand in the book. But anyway, I'll give it a try. It's about a certain fabrication. And we believe that some things that you use in buildings they seems not to serve or to support the idea. Also, it might support the idea, but it doesn't have to. I show you now something completely else, a, not a small cupboard, but a cupboard we have been making. And it's in a series of cupboards we make, and it's called Order. It's homage. Um, <clears throat> at a certain point, from, Holland, from a Holland brand proof, it's called, we got a strange demand to make a cupboard or to make a piece of furniture which was also acoustic. To me, a really Hollandish kind of questioning. A cupboard which is acoustic. At that time, at the office, we were quite fascinated by the work of Peter de Bruyne and it's maybe not such a bad idea to bring the work of Peter de Bruyne in contact with this issue of Eric Owen Moss. Anyway, as we did in all those pieces of furniture, we make, we call them rather exercises. We said like, okay, we're gonna make a cupboard which is acoustically, but we use a real reference to beat the reference on one hand, but to make it in, let's say, a difficult exercise. What you see here is the original cupboard of Peter de Bruyne, and it has two sides. The left side is called night, and the right side, the white side, is called day. And this is our kind of copy we made of the piece of furniture. But we made that copy in a specific way. We started from the brand Heeprock, which is plasterboard, and we looked really to all the documentations of all the elements, pieces they had, and we went on working with those details to make our version of the original. At the end, and maybe that's also what I appreciate so much in the work of Eric Owen Moss, at a certain point, it seems to me the joy of making. What you see here is a copy, but especially the joy of making this. All pieces of metal they use, the way they hang their ceilings, they make their walls, all those pieces we have been looking at, and we have been reusing those pieces in a recompilation of the cupboard of um, uh, Peter Jan, of uh, Peter de Bruyne. It's maybe that thing that we love that much in that work of, uh, of that I love that much in that work of Eric Cohen Moss when I was looking at it in the beginning, that it seems to me, and at that point I follow and agree on this point, a way of construction. But not a way of construction in the sense that you just want to construct it, but you in fact want to reconstruct it to something use. Use, and that's maybe there the point of fabrication, those things which are used or meant in a certain way to be used, use them in a different way to achieve a next step. Anyway, the story of this cupboard goes on. It went to Milan last year. No one bought it, of course. But we didn't want to put it on sale neither. We want to put on sale the idea. So we made a kind of folder in which you have all the details of all the materials you can buy at your local, at your local supplier. And then you can make your own Peter de Bruyne cupboard at this point today, when you paint it, when you screw it. You can buy, buy this filth at our uh, website. And that was, of course, a comment they did not like in Milan uh, uh, um, uh, uh, design, uh, which will go on in a couple of weeks once again. But in fact, you can say that when you saw the pictures or the drawings of uh, Eric Cohen Moss in the beginning, maybe it could have been made by him also. Although, maybe sometimes I miss, I can't read, I can't find this critical moment uh, in his work 
still today, but maybe I'm wrong. It's also like this. It's just like kind of irony we once made, and it was in that gallery, to say like, listen, we want to invent a kind of new type of dishes, a new type of ensemble uh, of ceramics, only starting from this kind of ceramic tube. You all know it's the kind of Rolls Royce uh, of, uh, uh, how do you call it in English? Um, Sewage. Hmm? Sewage huh? um, and we started to do some research on what we could do with it because uh, honestly for me still today this is one of the most beautiful ceramic I know uh, that exists. And we are doing some, I cannot say today, but till a certain moment we were just playing around to see when we would make cutouts of it from the tube, but also from the angles, what it could deliver as a kind of different kind type of dishes. Anyway, the point of fabrication, as is stated in the title of the book, is not that clear to me, unless I give it the interpretation that it's about reusing things in a different way. And in that sense, you saw the pictures of Eric Owen Moss, when he used this type but of another scale, of another size, this types of elements for columns and buildings, I had to say, damned, he was the first. That last point, construction or not. We believe that, yes, and that's clear, I believe, in the work I showed, but that's also clear in the work of Eric Cohen Moss, that when you are clear with construction, whether it's with simple construction or complex construction, it makes space. It creates a certain atmosphere. You see it again in this photographs of Eric Cohen Moss. Whatever you want, it's kind of open patio, top roof patio, whatever. And you see a lot of construction of one you can say this is possibly or eventually not the most practical or the most economical construction. But on the other hand, it is celebrated and it de makes the design of the space uh, very clearly. Like you see in this or like you see in this picture. These are pictures of models he made. He made of certain parts of the building he wanted to achieve. Same story with this picture. <coughs> Once again, you see this marvelous tubes he is using. Anyway, I like to put next to that a very small refurnishment we just delivered on a very small uh, half a year ago delivered on a very small house and it introduced you also to the Flemish uh, field of the backyards and the middle house is our contribution to that and maybe we did not make that significantly different although maybe when you approach and you look to the details one might discover different details but let's return to the interior this is the interior and i just like to show this project and to stop a few minutes or a few seconds with this slide because to me or to us, uh, many times when we judge work we are making on the table but maybe also making on the building site, there are always two double things we want to achieve. On one hand, we say like, I want to sit there and drink my coffee every morning and one day I want to try to discover how this really works while things have been decided, while they are as such, as such. But the other morning, I like to sit there and maybe just enjoy the look of it, looking at it, the, perspe the perception of it, and not demanding what the reality of it is. For us, at that point, in many projects, um, we think projects might be successful if we could achieve that double position. And it's a simple commission, because it's an extension of a house with a kitchen, and a dining place, but it's like this. And one can say the wooden beam above is a decoration or not. Well, it became decoration, but I can, I can prove you on plans and sections that it's really construction. We are now going back into the main house, towards the main house. You see this simple addition. But on the other hand, simple decisions like, for example, we broke away a wall. That's why we needed to support it. But we did not lower the ceiling anymore. And that's how 
all of a sudden this kind of drawing came along. And as the addition is built in simple red Flemish brickwork, many other additions in the space were made in the same way, but maybe they were just inspired in the very beginning for the first time when we arrived in the house and this kind of 50s addition brings it all together again. Drawings, but maybe especially this type of drawing. Like now we are making a catalogue of all the projects, the new ones and the old ones in a kind of new axonometry that tries to bring together the real idea of the project of the house. I could go on. I see I'm talking one hour already, you know, one hour and a half, with the claiming those ideas. You see, for example, here um, the VETS practice. And what we really believe in our practice is that construction is fairly interesting enough to put as finishing, as show. Okay, on one hand, this project is about a client who says we're going to make a clinic with, with, uh, with uh, MR scans for animals, a really clinic for, for animals. And we don't want to pay too much to the building, so we have enough uh, money for our technical equipment, for our medical equipment. So they say, make us a rough building. So we did. That's the real story of economy. On the other hand, we made a rough building, but we made some changes. Stupid changes sometimes, just a decision to make one wall in concrete brickwork and the other wall in just uh, um, ordinary brickwork and the other painted and then the other plastered. And then you see, for example, this kind of um, beam which supports the, the vide for above, from above. But we just made that beam coming out of the wall. So we had to make a plaster around it, paint it around it, and all of a sudden to us today, this beam makes the atmosphere of the space. But on the other hand, this building has many simple rooms. And in the simple rooms, they are just squares, rooms, we just wanted to make this kind of difference. It's the same type of brickwork, but from a different size, from a different height, from a different color of joinery, and then at the end, maybe we achieve just by those simple decisions that this walls becomes maybe the wallpaper of the room. To arrive maybe at this type of specific details. Once again, a simple decision to say the one is in, but in concrete, the other not. Then you have some walls which are perpendicular to it because that are the walls of the, that makes the rooms. And then how you connect it. How you connect it, you make details in the beginning. On the other hand, you debate them with the contractor on the building site. And a certain type of, one can say, drone ornament all of a sudden appears. And then the painter comes along and without asking, he makes his own painted ornament of it. Maybe I skip this project to go along, although I would like to, maybe I just stop. It's this wonderful, famous uh, project for Ordos and maybe I just want to stop with this drawing, that one particular drawing, once again explaining the construction of the space. It's a drawing made by hand. It's a drawing explaining where columns are interfering with the atmosphere of the space. I go quick on this. I'm very sorry. Because maybe I can stop one time with this slide again. This is a slide of the model of the same house in which we just wanted to achieve a certain um, quality of space, which is drawn by its construction, not only by its material, but by its construction as such. It's that famous house for Ordos there, where 100 architects were demanded to make a house of 1,000 square meter. That's our contribution, it was on show in Venice, some of you might have seen it. 
And to be said, to make a fast conclusion on it, is that, of course, this project for our office is very important in the sense that when we made it, we had to deal with a lot of issues that, on one hand, it was a crazy project far away in China. On the other hand, we wanted to answer it in a kind of framework of a square farmstead as a typology which is evident and simple to us. But also, we wanted to work on the construction, on learning how to make, how to build those things. And I have to say that when we saw the Malpractice Fats Clinic and when we saw maybe um, 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 uh, sheep loss, this small uh, addition to the house, all of a sudden one can say that this project is a kind of, let's say, not Bible, but manual, like Eric Cohen Moss has this manual in our practice. And it leads, or it leads, for example, to this kind of project. Today, a small refurnishment of a house, once again the axonometry. And this is, once again, a photograph from the building site in which the problem of the house can be analyzed. The original walls on the left side are in concrete but too small, and the floors also in concrete, they were pending. Although one can say at that time you do not want to see any more concrete because it makes the house, let's say, useless or let's say problematic, we added again concrete and a kind of brickwork. And one can say what we do here might resemble the most the Ordos project as such. You see here a combination, you see here a pre representation of concrete um, beams, columns, walls, but all with brickwork. And what we did in the house, when we closed the wall, we closed the wall with the brickwork, but always in the meaning that later on it would be visible. When we had to solve the pending of a floor, then we added beams, not beams uh, in the surrounding, but just in the middle, like a drawing, but these beams were made out of brickwork to arrive at this kind of atmosphere. Maybe it's the perfect representation of the model of the Ordos project. Finally, it's economic. Finally, it's a kind of honestly, being honest on what you do. Every uh, act we have been doing in the house by that is clear. It's a white house, but at the end, the door is closed by the brickwork. At the end, the door, the floor has been solved by the brickwork. It leads to many other exercises we're doing, like in this other small addition for a house in uh, Ghent again, in which we really went extreme with using the brickwork uh, in between structure and in between, let's say, finishing. And what you see here is a kind of small tunnel, one can say, with two load-bearing walls, of course, and the roof. But the roof has also been, in this type, finished by the brickwork. In that sense, the brickwork, the bond, has been changed just as a kind of abstract brickwork, while the walls are really having load-bearing brickwork, which shifts. And then in between, as we wanted to keep the things thin, you need to connect so that the tunnel does not, of course, collapse. But for that, we use this kind of small needles small needles that brings the four plates, because there is also a floor not visible at the time, that brings the four different walls, in fact, together. And each time, like you can see on this photograph with the ceiling and the wall, they have a different bond. By that, they express the reality of themselves. And all of a sudden, it comes together with the rain drainage, with the water drainage. Only photographs of the construction site, unfortunately, today. <coughs> but it brings it together, for example, with Eric Owen Moss, this type of dialogue, this type of detail. See how he has been thinking about connecting the beam towards the wall and how a specific detail has been developed at that point.
it brings me back, maybe, to the end of the small lecture, or brings me to the end of the lecture. Back to the first, or to the project Lederberg, of which I've been showing the colonnades. And I just put it this picture after this picture that I found in the book of Eric Owen Moss. It's this picture. It's the rooftop of that Lederberg communal service, of which I indicated to you on the picture of the facades, the kind of triangular incisions as to be, say, negative uh, ethics. And all of a sudden, light can come inside into the, into, the, into the building. But it seems for me to resemble, or I can put it next to that model Eric Cohen Moss made at that time. Okay, it's a kind of analyze. Maybe it's even not an analyze. It's maybe a very personal idea of looking to the things which I found back in the book and to which I was connected or our work was connected to. But I think also when I look to the book, which is merely important to me is maybe it's good not to understand what you see in the book. And maybe it's good, although I give it an attempt to bring our work next to the work of Eric Cohen Moss, maybe it's good not to do it. And that's good and just enjoy some pictures of it. This is once again Lederberg, as I pointed to the plan, the extensions, and those are the first photographs of the building site today, a couple of two weeks or three weeks ago, I think, in which you see the finishing of the rough building phase, and in which you see that the inspiration of this uh, wedding room, as it is called in its original status, leads to an inspiration of additions which are quite standing on their own, which are quite according the programs we added to it, but at the end just makes again a combination, a kind of setting uh, together, a kind of composition together. And that's maybe what I want to say when I look back to the work of Eric Owen Moss, although he tries to give seemingly in his book a certain analyze himself, maybe it's better to keep the book and to keep the work as Eric Owen Moss as a kind of thing you have to look at, to have to enjoy, and to discover some years later that maybe coincidentally a lot of things might have been unconsciously inspiring your work. Thank you. this uh, marvelous lecture, maybe just to allow other people to ask some questions uh, and, and to give that a start, allow me to ask you one question, um, only partly connected uh, to the last uh, pictures of Lidlberg, which are quite impressive, I have to say. Um, at a certain point you showed the uh, Ordos project and you said, look, the project is in many ways a pivotal project. And I, I am also, from my relative distance, agree. I think in many ways you see the project coming back many teams, which were developed either before or, or even afterwards. But the Ordos project is in many ways also a house with many houses, so the seven house house, right? Uh, which made me look something. Um, what about the team of house or maybe houses in your work? Because it seems to come back all the time. Uh, it's like you are unable to make one house as an answer to the question of one house. There's always many houses. And even projects which do not necessarily immediately evoke the idea of house seem to, your answer seem to very often touch the archetype of the house or again of the combination of many houses. Is it conscious? Now you say. <laughs> Is that conscious? I don't know. I mean, I think. Um, it has to do, I believe, if, if, if I want to, to give a fast answer on it, I think it might have to do with the fact it's also like in this project that um, decisions or interest in that sense are always as well. We, always, we say often that for us, MSM, or not we say often, it's clear to us that for us the interior towards the exteriors is one of the interesting things we always bring on the table when we developed projects. 
So I believe that maybe that's the reason why one can say I cannot name that's true one project which has one clear status, one clear perimeter one can say, uh, and that all projects also like this one, that they might be at first or maybe in the beginning the result especially from the interior rather than from the exterior perception, which is of course I have to say a very straight answer to a very straight uh, question. It has many more other perceptions and many more other approaches, of, of course. But also in this project, it's really the result of a organization of space, of interior as such. And by that, um. one can say that, for example, also in the Schiep Loss House, with the shift of the two small volumetries, has to do with the fact that we have been um, drawing that from the interior of the house, in which we wanted to include two small patios and as the exterior, but at the end, the perception or the outcome of it leads to the fact that seemingly the building is always constituted out of many parts. So maybe we just never arrive to that moment that we are able to shift the parts in the perfect position so that it becomes one, one can say. <laughs> <Try to believe. laughs> Uh -huh. I try to believe it also. I could ask a second question, but I would think it's better for somebody else in the public to, to ask questions. Mm -hmm. Very silent, huh? Mm -hmm. yes, in for, for the lecture, um, I think there's a, a reading that I, that I that you can make of your, of your lecture as the moment of finish and not, not finish. So the statement of the architect that says it's finished or not yet finished. Uh, and so we are kind of uh, in an in-between line thinking uh, are, there, uh, are there more layers to put, to put on it? Uh, which layers do you want to make visible? And uh, is it sometimes the construction is starting to be overrated or it becomes uh, an ornament? My question is, during your design process at the office, when, when do you understand that that is finished, that the moment has come to say it is finished? I, don't, I, I think that all the projects are finished for first, I believe. What I maybe have a problem with is that seemingly in making builders generally there is, and you, you see it often also when you make buildings and then you make the execution drawings and all the descriptions, that the description has chapters like rough building phase and finished phase. I don't believe in that particularly. But to come back to your question is that when do we see when it is finished? Well we make always a huge amount of drawings on every project. Details, uh, axonometries to understand what's going to happen. And then when they are finished, we say like, okay, now we can change. I mean, because when we can, we only can change when you understand what you change. So uh, for me, it's very important. Personally, I'm really always uh, like to go into the building sites frequently every week. Because uh, when we are making it, I believe there are huge opportunities to change it. Uh, uh, often afterwards we have to and have the new build, uh, building demands of permits <laughs> because we changed things significantly on the building sites. Even like in this project also, we changed things. I believe when it is finished, I don't run around with the idea when to, to achieve a moment of finishing. And we, we keep on going till the end, day of delivering, to make things different. Not because it's a goal as such, but each time when you come to the building site, you find something different to change. And I believe that's maybe sometimes also the, different, the difficulty when we are developing our details. It takes quite a lot of time, because whenever a detail comes to a, to a final point, you see new opportunities in it, and then you want to change it. So we have to find out any time there an equilibrium in time and, uh, and, and uh, opportunities. But I don't think it's an issue about when it's finished or not. 
It's only finished the last day, but it's always finished, even when you present a structure in a so-called unfinished modus. <laughs> He's thinking about the answer. <laughs> more, more questions, please. Yeah, I mean, looking at this image now, I realize we should have asked uh, you to do a lecture even on the weekend, no? <laughs> it is, uh, let me say, very far away from Mariko and Moss. At the same time, it is very much uh, can like, no? And, uh, yeah, I wonder, I will go to your book uh, again, let me say, looking for traces of uh, Louis Kahn instead of uh, Owen Moss. Yeah, but, you know, it's, it's like what we say earlier today, uh, references, what are references? References are so important, but they are really important to, 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 to use them in a different way than they are meant to, or to understand them in the wrong way. I mean, Khan, Moss, I mean, at the end, maybe there is no Moss at all in our work, I believe. Uh, but on the other hand, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, but I, I think if you ask me, you did the perfect lecture on, on, on the ambiguity of reference, uh, beautifully so. Now, I have maybe one last question, if nobody else asks a question here, which is, you've been working more or less from the beginning with uh, Philippe Dujardin, the photographer. Yesterday we had a lecture of Bas Prinsen, well, let's say the photographer where we always work with every time. I must say, Bas, the role is on the same time very ambiguous and very clear. I mean, in the process it's very ambiguous because you talk a lot and he shows things and, you know, references, stories like that. But in terms of pictures, he, his role is very clear because he takes pictures in the end. <laughs> I notice with Dujardin you have a different relationship. Uh, uh, you often show pictures in between, mm -hmm. which are also taken by him. I know, it's not entirely new to me, he, he goes to sites, you ask him, you also seem to have these iterations uh, based on, on pictures of his. So I was also curious to what extent his perspective to your work uh, uh, defines uh, your points of, or I see the hierarchy in the decisions, to what extent his perspective of your work may, drives your decisions, because I guess he takes certain pictures and not others. Yeah. I think he for sure does, and, and, and in the opposite way around, we, uh, we for sure also um, influence his way of looking to the things. Uh, I, I don't have pictures here with me, but he recently started himself making now not anymore this kind of manipulations on paper, but real manipulations in real time. He started to build things uh, at this time. I can't show, but not in this lecture. Anyway, I think, I think uh, this issue of, of Dujardin asking him to start making photographs during the process already starts to have its influence for sure on our work because he frames things and in that framing of things and as we start to manipulate his photographs again it's of course decisive huh? because as you say he takes photographs from a certain viewpoint we direct them but although we do not direct we all uh, next the fact that we direct them he makes his own choices uh, also at that time and that learns to look you in a different way of course to your to your own production and following that that's where started to make manipulated photographs uh, to make the next decision in the work in this project uh, specifically and, and it's not that we calculated a, or on that in the beginning but when we made the tender for this project we made a division between the rough building phase and between the, the finishing uh, tendering especially we could convince the city of Ghent to do so because we said like we're going to find a lot of other stories while we're building and we want to have that influence of this of this uh, conclusions to, to, to open new ways of looking to the finishing of it. Yeah, well, I think that uh, at a certain point when Philip, during the process, and there are a lot of other photographs, start to photograph really the process of building, at that time the story started of really staying much more closer to the rough building phase, 
uh, than one ever. Also in convincing the client to it, when we show those pictures to the client, he can imagine and he can go with our idea of decisions because you have to explain this to a, a mayor of a city that he should not finish the building but paint just certain parts to keep it like this. So I think that the method of introducing Philip earlier in the process uh, helps in the strategy of achieving things on one hand but also in the fact that he frames parts and in that frame we take decisions mm -hmm. clearly. Well, like a couple of questions, and we'll turn. Thanks. Thank you for listening.